emotions uh, to, to give you some sort of resolve here. Genesis 8, verse 1. Now remember, they have been in this ark now for over a year. <clears throat> uh, in that ark was, uh, in, the, in the first 40 days and 40 nights, don't you know that besides the animals, that there was incredible turmoil. I mean, you're stumbling, trying to walk. Uh, spiritually, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, because it's tossed and there's storms and loudness and that stirs everything up and every beast up and, you know, you know and all this stuff. And, and you're, you know, uh, it's not just the beast. It's the storm that's going on outside and the thunder and all of the, those kind of things. And... Um, it's all hindering your walk where you don't have a stable walk and, you, you know, we, we want to have that, you know, and we want to be able to have some sort of control and some sort of, sort of stability and whatever. <clears throat> but they've, you know, the, finally the storms cease, but, but now, uh, uh, and uh, someone pointed out, and I remember this of old, but someone recently pointed out at the chart up here, they said, you notice that the ark doesn't have a rudder because we're not steering this thing. We're not in control. God shut that door, and only God can bring you to the new creation, and only God can open the door to it. Amen? But thank God, God is our Father. So there's, you know, it's not that bad. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so in verse uh, 1 of 8, it says, And God remembered Noah. <laughs> Who said that? Yay. That's, that's what I, when I read it, after reading all this, you know, and the Spirit's really dealing with me about these beasts and everything, and finally God remembered, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm glad you remembered me. You know, I thought I was going to be locked in this thing forever, you know. And God remembered Noah. And so there's that, that thing of... Um, I mean, you're, you're in the ark. In truth, you're safe from harm. You're safe from the, the, the destruction. You're safe from all that judgment that happened to them out there. But it's just an incredible thing that God remembers not just that you're in there, but God remembers as to what lies ahead in the future. And now he's going to start moving to bring that about. You know, he didn't forget you. He didn't forget that, that you were in there with those beasts. And, and I wrote down in my notes, God controlled that door. God controls that door. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip, and I broke out my written, some of my written notes here. I'm going to skip dealing with the wind, which is a real important part of this landing at the right spot. And at the new creation. And I'm going to skip the door and the window as far as getting into it. And I'm going to skip the raven and the dove. But you do remember that the raven was an unclean beast, bird, and the dove was a clean one. And uh, so that has incredible bearing <coughs> on that. And uh, let's see. And we're going to go to verse 15 through 19. <clears throat> Genesis 8. And God spoke unto Noah, saying, Go forth. Oh, glory to God. I mean, when it says God remembered, whoo, but when he says go forth, you're leaving the cocoon. Well, for a, for a caterpillar, that's a big day. <clears throat> Amen? <clears throat> do, we need, do we have to put on the caterpillar skit right now to, <clears throat> to, to make you one with us in the understanding of what this means? <clears throat> it's a big day. You, uh, you know, it was bad enough being a caterpillar. But it's, you, you know, and you think, you think it's confining. Amen? You can't go fast. You can't do 
things too fast. You're not cool. <clears throat> but it's even more confining in that cocoon. And so you are wrapped up in burial now. <clears throat> but when the time comes and God, and remember, and I, I'm skipping that part about God opens that door. And let it suffice to say, only God can shut the door and only God can open the door. He shuts it to the destruction, to the judgment, but he opens it to the new creation. And just as you are helpless to shut that door and be safe from judgment, you are just as helpless to open it into the wide places of the new creation. You, you're, help, you're at the mercy of God. That sounds sweet to me. You know, I'd rather be at the mercy of God than the hands of men. <clears throat> Way more. And so uh, to expedite, I just thought, you know, I, instead of being spiritual, I'm just going to read a little bit from the notes. Is that okay? In other words, I'm not spiritual. <clears throat> That's really the conclusion of that. Um, God spoke again, go forth, out, and bring all living with you. Regarding life in the ark, the stench of the old was all around. Right? Inside there, the stench of the old was all around. And yet, are you not raised? Yes, you are. Are you not delivered? Yeah, really. Did you not skip the judgment as it were yes in a certain sense but in that ark that stench is still all around however the same God who shuts us in also lets us out but at the right time and the timing of God is so important and we always try to push God to push the timing <clears throat> I, some of you new people haven't heard this story but when I was a missionary in Jamaica uh, they put me in charge of the pigs and the chickens and the goats. <clears throat> and so I'm in there with the chickens and they're laying eggs and supposed to gather eggs and, you know, clean the hen house and do all this kind of stuff. But one of the things was that uh, <clears throat> not all of the eggs were meant for eating. We wanted to have more chickens and stuff. And I was raised in Oak Cliff, and that doesn't mean much to you here, but anybody knows anything about Dallas area, it's a rough area. Um, and we didn't really raise chickens there. I mean, <laughs> we hunted chicks, but we didn't raise chickens. <clears throat> and, um, and so here I am. I'm, I'm, you know, checking the nest and everything and, you know, checking the eggs. And all of a sudden, I hear this little, I'm going, what the heck? I got it. Up my, I could hear this little, I said, oh, this chicken's trying to get out, you know. And so, man, I got excited, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, I'd, I'd come back later and I'd check and it's still going. You know, and I go, oh, he's, he's going to be coming out soon. And, you know, I waited for a while. And I go, well, I've got to go, you know. And so go do some other stuff and come back, you know. And he's still clicking away, trying to peck his way out of there. And go, oh, this poor thing, my goodness, he's just having a hard time, you know. And he kept, kept working on getting out and working. Finally, I said, I'm going to have mercy on him. And I cracked it to let him out and... All that pecking was building up strength that he needed to survive when he got out. And when I let him out, he died. Because I jumped the time. You see, because I had human compassion. Can I get a old me? <laughs> you know, human compassion. Folks, you may think it's being kind. But if it's not Jesus, it don't count. Can I say it like that? <laughs> it doesn't count if it's not Jesus, because if it's you, it may be kind and it may feel good, but it's not pleasing the Father. God wants it to be the Son. And God knows, and we're praying, get me out of this ark. I can't stand these bees. I can't stand, you know, I can't, you know, I've been in here with, you know, these, my three sons are driving me crazy. Shim, ham, and bacon. <clears throat> I got to get out. Oh, 
But God knows the timing, and you are wise to trust your father. You're wise. And he knows, he, you know what? He cares. He's not trying to torture you. And it would be less torture if you'd trust a little more. I'm talking from experience, not as a great sage on the mountaintop, but as a lowly humpback on the earth, you know. I know, you know. You know, I wish I'd been a guru up there, but I'm not. I'm the guy that, that, you know. I mean, folks, if we learn from our mistakes, I should have a doctorate, you know. I mean, because I just make so many mistakes, and yet... We want to stay on track, and we don't want to jump the timing, and we want the Lord, and we really want it to come out with the reality of Christ into the new creation and not unleash another beast out there, us. We don't need to be letting go more beasts. We need Christ formed in us. And so it's, it's hard. It's very hard. Um, <clears throat> let's see. <clears throat> And when you exit the ark, you stand on brand new ground. What was hidden before, though believed in, is now manifest. What was bound and confined is now free. <clears throat> For Noah, the removal of these beasts finally came when they are no longer claimed and are now in the hands of the Father. Go away, little beast, go away. <laughs> you know, I release you into the hands of God. <clears throat> the, beast, the beast did not die at the moment, for they were already dead at the cross. But we had to come to a place where we didn't claim them anymore, where we saw the cross in such a manner that, that we were not, you know, remember Paul said, for I wrestled with beasts at Ephesus. That we are not fighting with them, trying to defeat them, trying to pray them away, trying to come up with something, trying to confess them out, fasting them away. The truth is, they are not yours, they're God's. And... I know that you all at this point want an answer that's going to go, oh, that's it, and walk out of here going, but you can't give that at a conference because we're all at, Paul and I were talking about this and, and Sharon, everyone's at a different place. Everyone has different kinds of beasts. You, each of us must find the Lord. We must wrestle through these things until it, we are on clear, solid, new creation ground. The discouragement comes when you think you're going to be in the ark forever. You're not. There is answers, but God's not going to give you answers. Jesus is the answer. But you can say that all you want, and it means nothing other than a good, hearty amen for most congregations I can't tell you. I would, I would tell, I would spell it out, I would relieve, I would break you out of your egg. <laughs> God knows it. He saw me do it. He said, well, I can't trust this knucklehead. You know. <clears throat> and I would, because of, of love and compassion. But this is something that the Lord must do. But he is doing it. He is. He is bringing us into this haven of rest. He is bringing us into this peaceful place. But we must wrestle through, just like Jacob. You know, Jacob became Israel. Did you know that? The same person, except for one guy was always manipulating and trying to get God to work everything according to his mind. His name was Jacob. And, and that Jacob guy wrestled with God and lost but one, God put his hip out. Can't imagine why God would do that to somebody. Put his hip out and changed his walk. Now he walks in weakness depending on the Lord. 
we got a good God, don't we? <laughs> you know, we've got a good Father. He loves us. But he knows what's best for us. And I'm not the Father. The Father is the Father. And your Father loves you and knows what you need and knows when you need it. Keep your heart with him. Don't turn on your Father. Amen? Don't turn on your father. Uh, I, I said they're already dead at the cross, talking about the beast. They are simply removed from Noah's life and responsibility. When Noah comes out of the ark, then he's free from the untamed beast, and he offers the clean to the father. The dove, the lamb. La, 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 I wonder what that means. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, the nature of Christ, no longer our beasts, you know. Well, you know, we, we all did that. Lord, I'd give you my cigarettes. You know, like he's going to go, oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, well, you know what I'm saying. I'm just trying to make a point here. You know, like we're, you know, like he's really going to be happy with, oh, this is great. Got any beer down there? <laughs> <laughs> and we feel so good. Oh, you know, we go, we, that's our testimony. I gave God my cigarettes. How did he feel about it? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, aren't we sort of, it, you, do you see how, you know, we, we messed up, folks. We all messed up people. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, he is no longer responsible for the care and maintenance of the unclean. He realizes that. He recognizes it. You know what? I remember, this is a, a vague picture of that. I remember at one time, I used to carry the burden of everything, everything, all these things, everything, you know, the care of all the, everything all the time. And one day I realized, you know, I need to resign as the general manager of the universe. You know? You know, because you, you care, yes, you care, but your care is killing you. You're not made to carry all that. He is. He wants to. But, you know, here's, here's a typical prayer. Oh, Lord, I give you this. Give me that back. Am I right? Or, here, I give this to you, Lord. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, do something with it. Dun, 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 dun. Give me that. Do we not trust him? Come on, he's our father. Come on, let's get in line. Let's line up with his heart. Let's be sons of God. Let's be in the family. Let's go after the Lord. Let's do it together. Come on, he's worth it. He's worth it. He's worth it. Praise God. And so Noah steps out and he goes, you know, you don't see him going, okay, now fellas, gather up, beasts. We had a good trip. This was great. Now report back once every week. No, he's come to an end. Remember what it says of the prodigal son? He came to an end of himself. You, can't, you come to an end. You say, what's that like? When will that happen? What are the things that lead up to that? What is, how's it going to affect me? What am I going to do when it happens? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just know that it is true, and you do come to an end, and finally you just get, you get tired, and you get tired not just of everything else. You're tired of yourself. You're tired of all your good ideas. Before you used to be tired of bad ideas. Now you're tired of good ideas. You, you know, I, hey, I got an idea. Nah, forget it. <laughs> you know, you're just, you know, look, let's just, let's just find out what the Lord wants. Is that all right? And you know, there are times, <clears throat> folks, this, this church and this Bible school would be a lot bigger if I had kept coming up with bright ideas. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And, but then after a while, I started, you know, resigning, 
And then people go, well, we, we need to have this. Well, we ought to have a big youth group. Well, we ought to have this and that and that. And the Lord wasn't doing all that stuff. And I just said, you know, uh, let's wait on God. And if God doesn't do it, we're not going to do it. And some people don't, li don't like that. Well, they got a big youth group over here. My God, you got to have a big youth group. I mean, you know, these kids are all going to go to hell. Well, you know, they didn't. But some of them turned out pretty good. Some of them are actually really after Jesus. <laughs> you know? But people always pushing. You know, come on, you got to do it. We got to have this. You got to go. You know, I just, get off of me. Let's trust the Lord. Well, the Lord ain't doing anything, so we've got to. Well, you know, I mean, that's the way, you know. The Lord helps those who help themselves. What, now Ben Franklin is God? I mean, I can't help myself, so I got no hope from God, if that statement's true, you know. The Lord helps those, and I can't, I'm helpless. Well, you're out, dude. You know, there's no hope for you then. You got to help yourself. Well, I believe you got to turn your heart to the Lord, but he'll do the work. I believe he does want our heart. Yes, he wants our heart. We can say, I don't, we can say to the Father, I don't want to do what you want. I don't want to go where you want. But I ask you to change my heart. But right now the answer is no, but I'm asking. Am I right or wrong? Is there not something to that? You don't, you don't have to, you know, with most Christians it's this. It's either one of three things. It's either, yes, Lord, I'm with you and everything, and maybe that's sincere, but you're not, and you're going to fail. <laughs> or it is, yes, Lord, and you're lying through your teeth. <laughs> or it's no, Lord, and the deep darkness comes over you, and the devil comes up next to you and waltzes you off. Because that's what we expect. We expect either, either we're all out or, you know, if I say no, then I have to go into darkness and, okay, come on, Satan, let's go, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's almost like that. It's almost like we've resigned, we resign ourselves. Folks, you can say, God, I would love to be with you, but I ain't, and I got beast, and I got junk in me saying, no, no, no. <laughs> Some of you look like you're looking in a mirror when I was doing that. <laughs> and, and, and yet, Lord, here's the trick. If you can change my heart, I'm with you. But I'm open to you dealing with me. Help me. Bring me to that. But I'm not there yet. Now, he doesn't grab you by the ear and go, you little punk, get over here. But he wants your heart. He just wants you to be, just stay open. Just stay open. If you've, if you've done the worst thing in the world, I'm sorry, stay open to your father. Stay open. Because he's still open. He loves you. And say, you know, I ain't much, but if you can do something with me. And he'll go, you know, well, I made all this stuff out of nothing. <laughs> and you say, well, I'm nothing, so let's get going. <laughs> Guess what? I, you thought you rested. You're going to have to start over. <laughs> Maybe I should read some. What do you think? <laughs> this isn't near as funny in here. I don't know. He is no longer responsible for the care and maintenance of the unclean. The truth of the new swallows up those beasts. You know, it's like Moses coming into Pharaoh, throws down his staff, turns into a serpent, and, you know, we think that Pharaoh is going to go, Oh, my God! That's really cool! Okay, leave and go your merry way! No, he goes, hey, 10 of you guys over there, you come over here, they take their staff, throw theirs down, and then they got 10 snakes everywhere. And then you go, oh, we're outnumbered. Run! <laughs> you, know? 
you know, I mean, that's the, the panic, the feel we get, you know, oh my God, you know, oh Lord, I, you know, you sent me in here, and yet it's worse now than it was before I got in here. Until you watch Jesus go to work, loop, 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 and he swallows up all of theirs. He doesn't bite into them. The poison hit them. They go, and poof, one down. Next, two, three. Yeah, see, because that, that's, that's us. That's us, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the big show, you know. Folks, death is swallowed up of life. Mortality is swallowed up of life. The mortality that holds us to this earth is swallowed up, not of resurrection, of life, not of, of victory over it. It swallows it up. It doesn't, it doesn't beat it up. All of a sudden, it's all being swallowed up, and you, years later, you don't even remember what the, those snakes were at that time. You go, what, what was that? You know, somebody reminds you and go, oh, my God, I used to have real trouble with it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I used to have real trouble with that stuff. And I, it's just been swallowed up, you know. And so <clears throat> what, what I read here says mortality is swallowed up of life. Others may have a problem with them, these beasts, but you do not. The beasts all run off. And other people who may not, you know, and, of course, you know other the flesh increased again because it's only a type and a shadow but those beasts were not Noah's anymore he was free he was free does that sound good to anybody does it okay does it sound good enough to actually steer your heart in that direction does it sound good enough to say you know what I need to kick it up a notch does it sound good enough to say Lord yes yes I want this. I want you. I, I, I believe that there is something after the ark and that the ark is not the total picture of in Christ. Come on, deeper life people. <laughs> Come on, let's get with the truth here. You know, I mean... We want to believe in the, oh, I'm in Christ, you know, I'm floating high above, the, you know, everything's dead under me. Yeah, except these fellas inside that ark. What was that? <laughs> you know. yeah. What'd you just step on? <laughs> you know, <laughs> ah! Anyway. We're not going back. We're, we're, we're coming out of that. All right. <laughs> All right. When God opens the door, and I, I better skip that because that gets in the door and window. When God opens the door, we let go of the things of the old, pride, impatience. We no longer try to redeem it. You know, like bringing all them animals. We're go, you know, well, well, okay, all their stuff needs to die all their pride and all their impatience and all their stuff, but I need to save mine, you know. Oh, yes, I surrender all. <laughs> I surrender, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm surrendering all. Don't be looking back there, you know, because we got aces up our sleeve and we got stuff, and that's okay. I mean, that's, that's human nature. We do that, okay, but we get stuck with them on the ark then. We get put in a confined place eventually where, it, you know, it rears up and bites us. Or bites up and rears us or something. <laughs> <laughs> bites us in the rear. You know. <laughs> well, you know what I'm talking about. Because why? Because we saved it alive. Because we redeemed, we tried to redeem something. You know, didn't Abraham try to redeem Ishmael? Oh, Lord, let him live before you. Let him be the one. And God said, he is not the one. Okay, I'm going to bless him. And, and I'll give him long life, and he'll be around for a long time to give you trouble. Because you asked me to bless him. <laughs> you know, I think if Abraham had been had foreknowledge and seen what was that, he would have gone, you know, let's just let him go out in the wilderness and 
disappear with the rest of the beast, you know. But, you know, we're all, we're, it, we're all, you know, I was, I don't know, I was, I was trying to rest this afternoon and I was thinking about this and I was thinking about, you know, some, and I know this is, we'll just see what, the, where this goes, but I was thinking about a terrorist attack and I was thinking if somebody came to me and said, look, you, you know, you've got to give us the key to uh, this you know, bomb that, that can blow up a bunch of people because, for example, we want to blow up Los Angeles or something like that. And I said, no. And they say, okay, if you don't, we're going to go gather up your kids and your wife and everyone you love and we're going to kill them. And on movies and stuff, the people always go, okay. But the thought, this, uh, this came to my mind, and this won't be foreign to my girls because they were raised with this kind of thing, but the thought came to my mind, my loved ones or someone, those people in Los Angeles or somebody's loved ones, they're just as loved as my kids are. So, you know, I'm going to give up somebody else's loved ones to protect mine. And I say there's something wrong there. I'll always say my kids, my family, we're, we're with the Lord. Okay, take us. We're with the Lord. Take us. We'll go. You better give us that. We're going to, you know, we're going to kill you. We're already dead, you know. But, but they're not. They still need the Lord. And that's just a scenario. That's just a thought. But I, I really wonder if I was ever put in that situation, if I wouldn't just say, hey, we're with the Lord. We're okay, you know. There is a resurrection after our death. We're going to be all right. I can't put myself first. I can't put, I must put God and others first. You know, I mean, you make that stand. Now you know. You get in that situation, we'll see what would happen. But I'm just saying, I, I feel in my heart that that's right, that, that, that those people, those children are loved by somebody too. And why should they die? Why should I give, why should I give them up? And especially, you know, okay, well, you got my five, six people, you know, you got 100,000 or 2 million or whatever there. Kill us. Especially if I'm the key to unlocking and unleashing something on someone else. Let's take it on ourselves. Is that not the spirit of the lamb? <laughs> anyway, you don't have to believe that. You don't have to believe anything I say, as a matter of fact. <coughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, you'll still go to heaven. You don't have to believe anything I say. <coughs> sure. I've got a story about that, but I better not tell it. because we're. <coughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> we no longer try to redeem it, to take it with us, but we let it go. And that's the key of this new creation when you enter into it. You're ready to let things go that before you weren't. You're ready to let it go and say, hey, I'm tired of trying to redeem that. I'm tired, tired of being responsible for it. I'm try, tired of trying to make this work. These beasts are going to be what they are. Beast. Anybody ever seen, what is it, the island of Dr. Moreau? <laughs> you should see, after hearing this conference you ought to watch that <coughs> it's not Christian though <laughs> but that's okay neither am I I'm just kidding <laughs> wipe that from the record <coughs> alright this does not mean it yet remains in the new creation but that we no longer try to hold on to it in other words the truth is all these beasts died all everything everything died at the cross right so they're not in the old creation and in truth they're not in the new creation right but you can't give a perfect picture of the cross through a shadow so you have to just let them go but the letting them go makes them disappear and you see that he is no longer 
with them. He's no longer holding on to them. He's no longer caring for them and maintaining them and trying to keep it something alive that God says, look, I want you to concentrate on the clean beast and the altar. Allow the Lord to, to share those things with you. <coughs> Uh, so this does not mean it yet remains in the new creation, but that we no longer try to hold on to it. As far as we are concerned, we're dead to it. First, the world was crucified to us by the flood, and now we are crucified to the world. The flood took that all away, but you're not yet crucified to it. You're still holding on to it. At first, we reckon it dead, but now we reckon ourselves dead. I reckon that dead. I reckon that uh, this is all dead. You know, no, no, no. Now I'm dead. And you remember that's what Paul came to in the end of Romans 7. Oh, wretched man that I am. You're never going to make this journey in the ark to the new creation until the end conclusion is, you know what? I'm tired of blaming everybody else and looking at everybody else and saying it's this is their fault and my life would be better if they hadn't done this. And that. Folks, we have a free will and we can go after the Lord and we need to quit blaming everybody else. Yes, there are, there are evils. There are unfair things. There are hard, hard, hard things. But we are responsible to get our eyes on the Lord. Well, I didn't follow the Lord because so-and-so did so-and-so. You need to get after the Lord. God would say that. Jesus would say that. Paul would say that. David would say that. Abraham, they would say, look, all of us, you know, I mean, I, I would be embarrassed to walk into, if you will, let me put it like this, I'd be embarrassed to walk into heaven among Joseph who was mistreated and terrible things happened to him and, and yet he went on with the Lord, but oh no, I was blaming someone. No, I'd be embarrassed to, to, to you know, see uh, most of these men who went through stuff, the, the people of God all gathered up there and I'm going, well, you know, oh my God, so and so, the reason why I never, I wanted to be like y'all, but I just, I would hide my face in shame. I wouldn't want to go. <laughs> you know? Yes, you mess up. I mess up. But I got news for you. Jesus never sinned, and we're supposed to be following Jesus. Well, we, if we were, you see, if we were back in the time of David, we'd have turned on David for what he did. Well, you killed a man. Get his woman. We, and we'd be righteous, too. And we'd be right, but not right with God. We'd be right, tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Well, you, you, you kill that man. You had him killed so you could take his woman. And then got her pregnant with that, you know, bastard child Solomon. All of heaven's going, oh, my God, shut your mouth, dude. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? <laughs> We need to know the Lord. We need to go after the Lord. David said, though 10,000 fall on my right and my left, yet I will go on. I will be with the Lord. When you stand before God, there are not going to be any excuses. It's going to be, yes, Lord, or, oh, well, you know, this and that. I'm telling you, Jesus is worth it. Is, is that person worth it? To keep you from Jesus. Is that, are they that big of a deal? Are they that big of a deal? Is it really that big of a deal? Well, if it is, okay. If you're willing to trade that off. But I say, let's go on. My God. Uh, you know, every preacher in the world says, if you sin, pick up, get forgiveness, and go on. I mean, I, I remember recently, I, you know, within the past year, I repented to somebody. And they were, they were in a foreign country, and I repented to them, and they'd been having problems with me for a couple of years because I stood up for somebody who'd sinned. And so I, I repented to them for any part that I had done, and they, <laughs> they said to another friend, they didn't say that to my face, but the friend told me later, said, well, they didn't, they didn't receive your repentance because 
they didn't believe you were sincere. Well, you know, Jesus says, you know, if you go to your brother and ask for forgiveness, make sure you, sh you convince them that you're sincere. <laughs> One of the requirements is they must, because if they don't, it's all void and you're still in bad, a bad place. Well, if that's the, you know, if that's the case, all these beasts on the, on the ark, I don't forgive you. I don't feel it. You got, come on, give it to me. Make me feel it. <laughs> you know. Folks, you've got to do what you know to do in the Lord, and you've got to go after the Lord, and you've got to, and you'll stand before, and you know, I mean, if they're, if they're messing up or lying or whatever, they'll stand before God, and God will deal with them to, to you know, his, to his servant or to him, their servant will rise or they will fall. Don't let them hold you back. Amen, Kim? Let's not let them hold us back. We've got to get up. We've got to go after. We got, you know, I, I, I had you turn to the scripture and we didn't even read it. It was 2 Corinthians 4 where he says, you know, while we look not at the things which are temporal, this light affliction worketh for us. Well, most of the affliction we're going through is working against us. But he says it works for us, but only while we look not at the temporal things that are going on. Now, that's either the word of God or it's not. If it's God's word, it doesn't matter what we think. Amen? All right, I'll get off of that. But that's, you know, I just know for a fact that people just keep allowing, and they just stay in a paralyzed state. They don't ever do anything for God. They don't ever break out. They don't ever get into the gloriousness of the new creation. And then they say, well, you know, all this and that and that. God's word is the final word. That's the thing that's going to be the final word. Uh, it's like the show I saw where it says, you know, we're moving on up to the east side, da 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 da. And the guy goes, man, that's a, that's a, a jingle off of a TV show. And he said, just because it's a jingle, don't make it not true. Well, just because it's the word of God and someone says it that you don't like saying it doesn't make it not true. As far as we're concerned, we're dead to it. First, the world was crucified to us, but now we are crucified to the world. At first, we reckoned it dead, but now we reckon ourselves dead. Oh, wretched man that I am. And that will be the end conclusion of, of uh, getting where you begin to step out of the ark. Okay, I think, let me make sure here. Because um, I have whole lot more here. Noah moved into that which had been cleansed and refreshed after judgment. It was not the same old place. But all things had become new. Mountains were in different places. New rivers were formed. New trees. Plants began to grow. And in the midst of that, Noah stepped off and he built an altar in the new. Not to redeem the old. That's over with. Not to fix the self-life in the ark. This was planted right in the heart of the new creation. And the first thing that was put there. Just like, just like the tabernacle. You know. Just like the tabernacle. Made according to pattern. That's us the tabernacle of God, the temple of God, made according to a pattern that was seen in the mountain when God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit says, I will have a body. I will have a body. And, and in them, the first thing you'll see inside of them is you'll step inside and there's the altar. Right, Because the tabernacle is a picture of, folks, we talk about covenants and all this stuff. Let me tell you something. The first covenant... The first covenant happened before the world ever was made. And I'll end with this. It's getting late. The first covenant ever happened was happened before there was ever a world. That's where God the Father and God the Son sat down and made a pact together, made an agreement together, and made certain promises to one another that you, you Jesus, will die 
and you will rise again and you will have a body and all everything will be accepted in you, in union with you and in oneness with you. And this is the way it's going to be. And they said, okay, let's do it. And then they created everything. And that's the first, foremost, overriding, overrides anything and everything. Not a covenant with us, a covenant between them. So this is what we want. And this is what they're going to get. And it's going to, that tabernacle is going to be made up of all perfect people. No. No. Mortality is swallowed up of life. His life. And see, we say, well, that one serpent is mine and the ten is the devil's. No, the ten is us. <laughs> we get swallowed up. Our mortality, our failures, our lack, our, you know, uh, folks, just you, you, you think of the, the running rampant of those beasts inside that ark, but think of Noah's response at times. You wonder why God enclosed this whole thing in where nobody could see it? Because we would lose respect for Noah. <laughs> If we knew, you know, we would lose respect because I can't believe a man of God would ever act that way. So God said, well, my God, myself. <laughs> Can you see the Lord doing, oh, myself. These people, folks, that, that altar that took place back 2,000 years ago, that altar took away your sins. This altar puts Christ in you. This altar in the new covenant, in the new creation, puts his life in you, and it redeems everything so that, so that whatever, you know, I mean, you read the story, just for example, you read the story of David, or you, re you read the story of Abraham, or all this stuff, oh, you know, let me give you a good example, uh, Samson. Oh, what a horrible person, and yet, in Hebrews 11, God lists him as one of the people of faith, you know, uh, consider the faith of Samson, you know, the faith, uh, uh, his whole life, I mean, much of his life was a mess, God, Couldn't you pick someone better? God never, you know, minces words. All have sinned. All have come short of the glory of God. All are judged and should die at the cross. All. Amen? All, all have sinned. All have come short of that glory. All are judged to die. Period. Christ liveth in me. I bear about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus. Folks, that's new creation, new covenant life, not, not punishment. <laughs> I be, I don't, I'm not doing the dying. I bear about in my body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And somewhere along the way, in this, inside this ark with all of the freak outs and with all of the bad reactions. Anybody ever had a bad reaction? You know? Okay, okay. Thank you, Steve. All of the, all of the, all of the freak outs, all of the bad reactions, all of the things that you, sh you do and you shouldn't have done, come on, all of that stuff going on, but God never lets that show, but at a certain place, a certain place this thing kicked in and he said, 
and I let it all go. I can't fix it. I can't control it. I can't. Uh, but you know what? It's not mine. I believe that this death that happened over here at the flood also happened to me. We're all dead. We all came short. We all need Jesus. And when he said that, boom, the ark found rest. And we rested with him in the ark. And then we stepped out and we stepped into the new creation. And God said, now you're ready to walk on new ground. Anybody ready to walk on new ground? New ground. Not the ground of the old. Not the ground of you. Not the ground of your life. But the ground of Christ. How can we claim to preach the cross if we don't preach the cross? You know what the new beginning is? Christ. Not him wiping your slate clean. Christ. Where God now looks at you and he says, I see you in my son. Now you are accepted totally because you find your hope in my son. Because you are resting. And that's, that's important because that's what happens once you get to a certain place. You're ready to rest in him and, and you've given up on yourself. You give up on yourself. See, you know, you know who the righteous people are? The ones who hadn't given up on themselves. They're still righteous, and they'll judge the heck out of you. I almost said the double H-E hockey stick. H-E <laughs> double hockey, hockey stick. You know, they will judge the hell out of you. Oh, did I say it? <gasps> oh, my God. Well, I'm fixing to be judged. The hell out of me. Well, thank God I'll finally get it out of me. <laughs> I got eight minutes to tell you. Those who still have some form of righteousness in themselves are the ones who judge. And when you don't, you look at somebody who's failed and sinned and they fall on their knees and they're hurting and everybody walks off from them and everybody casts their name out as evil and you walk over and you pick them up and you say, come on, brother, and you give them a cold glass of water and you say, Jesus is still on the throne. He still loves you. There's still hope. And everyone else say, what are you doing with him? Did they say that to Jesus? What are you doing with him? What are you doing hanging out with these sinners? Who said that? The righteous people. The unrighteous said, we need Jesus. We need the Lord. You're the only, your word is the only word of hope that we're hearing in all of this whole creation. And that is a word that there's none righteous, but you are made unto us righteousness. And I'm willing, I'm finally at a place where I'm willing to give up. Paul said, not having mine own righteousness. What did he say that over? He said, he said, the things that were gained to me, I count loss. What things were those? You know, his lineage, his heritage, his goodness. I was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. I was well-trained. I know stuff. I really followed God. Everyone else didn't. I did all this stuff. And he said, you know what? I, I count all of that loss for Christ. Am I perverting the scriptures there? I count all of the religious stuff that, that was made me something as nothing that I may be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own, but he has now made unto me my righteousness, and I cling to Jesus with all my heart. Somebody says, well, you know, are you ready to stand before God with that stand? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready to be one with Jesus. I'm ready to be accepted, but only because I'm in union with him. And I'm ready that if anything that is counted good comes out of me, it will be Jesus. Not just in the name of Jesus or for Jesus. It will be Jesus. Well, you can't 
you, you, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. I'm closing my Bible. Does that mean anything? <laughs> the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. You have to move in the direction of this new creation. You know, who knows what direction this ark takes before it lands. I bet you anything you could have sailed a boat from where Noah was to a r Mount Ararat in probably three weeks. But it took a year. <laughs> you see, I don't know where it all goes. I just know where it ends up. Amen? Amen. Let's stand together. Are we going to have any an more announcements or? Okay. Uh, yeah. Paul and Sharon and Lindsay will be leaving early in the morning, so please be sure and give them a big hug and some love. And I, you know, I'm just I'm so glad everyone came, but I'm really blessed that that uh, Paul came and brought his family. I'm just really, really, really blessed, and uh, sense that God did something on this trip. And I sense that he, because he and I talked at dinner time. And sensed that he did something between many of you and him also. And I just love that. I just love that. We need one another. And we need to be able to hold on to one another. So be sure and tell them goodbye and, and give them some love. Amen. <coughs> we want them to feel the love. And this is the love boat right here. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. They, they keep giving me signals of how much I've got three minutes left to make jokes. <laughs> okay. Did you hear the one about... No, no. <laughs> All right, let's pray. <coughs> Mike Wallace, quit laughing. <laughs> Father, we're just...